Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me. My name is Candy Dukowski, and I am your tour guide for this portion of your journey through the New York State PTA Convention. Um, we are here for a workshop on change, the opportunity for growth. Um, my position with New York State PTA, just a real quick introduction, is I'm a field support coordinator. So I get to assist our unit, our regions and our, their fabulous region directors um, when any questions arise or anything I can help to advise and guide them on. So I've been part of PTA for, I believe I counted, this is my 11th year, and I'm super excited to be here to be able to present this to you today. So we are going to talk about change and the possibilities that come with change. And just to get started, if you wanna feel free to go ahead and type in the chat box um, and just give me an example of some of the changes that you've experienced in your life, um, whether you were younger, older, recently, long time ago, and they can be good and bad changes. It doesn't matter. I just wanna get us thinking about change, all right? All right, and then I'm going to share my screen and we'll get started here. Great. Okay. So the first thing I want to let everybody know is that yes, you can survive change. It's not always a bad thing. You can survive it. And as you see from the screen here, um, these pictures show that especially if you live in New York State, we survive change every year. And that's from spring to summer to fall and winter. The weather changes all the time, sometimes daily, sometimes multiple times daily. So this is just an example that yes, you can survive change. And there will never be a part of your life that doesn't involve change. It can start um, just something as simple as our family, our families, you know, where we get married and sometimes we get divorced and sometimes remarried and we have children and our children grow up. Our friends can change, especially if you're moving, you'll get a new group of friends. Our children's friends change a lot. And our PTA leadership changes. Um, many of you on here have changed leadership positions multiple times. It's what we do. And some of you who are new to PTA, welcome. Don't get scared. Don't run away. Um, but you will sit under leadership changes. It's bound to happen. Everything changes, including ourselves. I have changed. Thank God I have changed. I hope that's a good thing. Um, you can't escape change happening because it pursues us, okay? And we may be tempted to outrun change, but instead I would love to challenge you to learn how to embrace change and learn how to deal with the change that you may be faced with. Look at those good changes in your life and you'll see that change can be a good thing. So now we're gonna take a little, little trip back in history. If you know me at all, um, you know that I'm a little bit of a history nerd. Okay, so I love to dig in the past, all right? Um, so we're gonna look and see how PTA has changed. So back in 1954, this is my local unit. Back in 1954, the Hamburg PTA elected husband and wife teams as officers. Picture it. Yes, my husband is very glad that we no longer do that. Our PTA has changed and our bylaws have changed and we no longer elect husband and wife teams. Back in 1969, the Hamburg PTA used to have volunteers ride the school buses the first few days of school. And this is fascinating to me. They would ride these buses the first few days of school and make a report regarding how many bus stops there were how many children were picked up, how long the bus stops were. Um, and then this report would actually go to the state education department. Thankfully, we no longer do this. Our PTA has changed and we no longer provide a census of information to the state education department on our bus routes. And then this other one, Hamburg PTA launches membership drive with 15 teams and 100 workers. This was 30 years ago. How many of you have 100 volunteers committed to work on your membership committee? Yeah, that was a long time ago. We have changed, admittedly, but we no longer have the need to do the door-to-door -door membership drive. We have other avenues that we can do that. So that is another change. 
PTA has been around for 125 years, as we all know from celebrating this weekend. And in that time, we have seen things change. Changes in the creation of kindergarten classes and child labor laws, public health service, hot and healthy lunches, juvenile justice system, the arts and education program, and school safety. All of these have come about in 125 years. Today's PTA also, obviously the way we do PTA has changed. You know, no longer gone are the days of the rotary phone or even a party line on the phone if you're old enough to remember a party line. No comments, no comments. Um, like I said, our, our, you know, in Hamburg, our husbands and wives are no longer elected together. Thank goodness. Um, here in this picture, you see that, you know, our technology is constantly changing. The phones have changed, like I just mentioned. Um, the repositories, how we store things, no longer, you know, it's no longer binders and notebooks and pieces of paper. We've all gone, well, not all of us, but I'm sure most of us have gone to online storage. But with all change, there are challenges. Let's admit that first and foremost. All right. First of all, the most important challenge, I think, at least in my mind, is that with the creation and the evolution of technology, we are never out of touch. If you're one of those people who is capable of shutting off your phone and closing your computer and saying, I'm done for today, then I applaud you because I'm not there yet. I am always connected and I'm always in touch with people. But what happens also when our power goes out? Those of us who are always connected to our phones and our computers, what happens when the batteries die and the power goes out? How do we connect with one another? Have any of us ever truly gone paperless? I know our school districts have tried, our PTA units have tried to go green and become truly paperless. I'm not sure that any of us ever have. If you have, I'd love to hear about how you do it. Sometimes the challenge is for those who may not understand technology, right? Um, or the new processes, whatever those may be. If they don't understand it, they can't keep up with it, right? And that becomes a challenge also to move forward. Kind of going back to when I mentioned that the challenges were never out of touch, were always reachable. Does it cause us to burn out faster as volunteers? Think about that. If you're able to reach your committee chair 24 seven, or at least 18 hours out of the day, is she gonna burn out in a few years time? And another question you might wanna think about is where do our permanent files end up now that we're storing everything on the cloud? They say they end up on the cloud. Where is the cloud? I know it's that question that never gets answered. But, you know, we do have permanent files stored away in our basements, and then we have some that are stored on the cloud, and then we have some stored here and some stored here. How do we keep that organized? And then another question I want everybody to consider with um, the challenges that come with change. And when we have our more experienced PTA members and volunteers who are full of knowledge, but they remember how it's been done, and they may not be ready to move forward, and that's okay. And we hear that phrase, but we've always done it that way. How many, I mean, it's a cringeworthy statement. I understand, I've been there, um, but how many times have we heard it? Those who are resistant to change will bring that up. And this is our natural responses to change. I love this. This is the perfect graphic for this discussion here because you're going to see people who love change and they're ready to embrace it from the get-go. You have people who are happy about it, say, yeah, that's a good idea. Some who are excited about it, some who are shocked and in awe or dismayed or angry or may cry. Every feeling is, is pretty much embraced, you know, embodied in this graphic. Change is scary. Let's admit that. 
it means that things are not going to be the same anymore. And we talked about this early on. Our friends move, our jobs change, our families change. There's always a new way of doing things. First time leaders. It's a change just to be a leader for the first time, isn't it? Moving from volunteer, committee chair to PTA leader. Those of you who are new to your position, maybe you're not a new PTA member, but maybe you're new in your position. It's a change. So we go from possibly denial and I don't want to. I'm sure there's a guy in here right now in this graphic that's saying, I don't want to do this. To anger, why do we have to change? Being angry about it. Being fearful of change. And maybe exaggerating about going through that by using words like never and always. We've always done it that way. Well, we've never done that. And then there's a level of frustration, resistance, if anybody ever has experienced resistance to change, or even not just resistance, but just avoidance, refusing to go through the new process and procrastinating. Finally, we can come around to learning change and what can we learn from change? Maybe unlearning, you know, if there are changes that need to be made to the new process and then relearning and accepting and finally committing to making it work. I think one of the most important things we can do as PTA leaders to encourage change to happen is to make sure that we create a culture of inquiry and make sure that we're asking the question why, that we ask it ourselves and encourage our members to ask it also. Why are we doing this particular thing in this particular way? As PTA leaders, we're often seen as the doers. You know, we're the ones who make sure things get done. But do we ever really take the time to question what it is that we're doing? Sometimes those who are not in leadership may perceive that it's not okay to raise a hand and ask the question why. Questions may seem to challenge authority. It's looked to disrupt established processes and it can force people to think about doing something differently. It makes people uncomfortable, but inquiring minds can help identify new opportunities and fresh possibilities. And asking the right questions can help us discover what matters, where our opportunities lie, and how we get there. So here's our questions, right? We have our why. We come across a situation, we encounter it, and we ask why? and then begin to take that opportunity and come up with a possible solution. The what if possibilities. Those are the aha moments, the light bulb that goes off in your head that says, oh yeah, we could do this. And then you take that possibility and you try to impl implement it and figure out how. And that's how you come to a solution for change. We talked briefly a little bit ago about creating that culture of inquiry let your members know it's okay to ask the questions. Policies could get challenged. They want to know why are we doing it this way? And I know it's hard because not everyone wants to defend methods that have proven to work well in the past. And it can create a perceived threat to authority. If someone questions you as the PTA president, if someone approaches you, why are you doing this? Our long-term residents in PTA, our experts, they might resent having their views questioned. But a culture of inquiry will help keep created creativity flowing and fresh thinking will continue to emerge. So what would you do, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? It could be anything, right? I mean, the sky's the limit. Um, but what if you're wrong? What would happen? What's the worst that could happen? You could fail. Okay, so you failed. Now what? 
move forward. That is the hard part and now it's out of the way. You've done it, you've learned, let's move on, right? How do we react to mistakes with our PTA units? Do we yell, kick, scream, cry? Teach our children better, I hope. Give your PTA members the freedom to be wrong. Let them know it is okay. We are here to work as a unit, to work together. And if somebody makes the wrong choice, let's encourage them, build them up and move forward. Make sure your unit is a safe space where your members are free to ask their questions. And remember, no question is too basic to ask. I tell this to my, to my region directors all the time that I'm helping. Call me anytime, let's ask. Let's learn about it together, let's figure it out. So let's talk about the change process, okay? So our goal, our end goal is how do we get through the steps to accept change? Get motivated. Here's what you wanna do. I have a friend and this was his tagline and I love him dearly, default to yes. Find your yes person, find that person you can bounce ideas off of who is going to encourage you and help you grow and change. Don't just have that person in your back pocket though. You wanna make sure you're listening to them. All right, and then when you're motivated, you can get ready to see what's gonna happen. Change is gonna be uncomfortable, it always is. And our brains aren't really programmed for change. So look at internally, how do you present yourself to others? Maybe you need to change up your routine. I'm not a morning person whatsoever. So I could never work out in the morning. I say never, is never really never? <laughs> Maybe I need to change my routine so my afternoon workout becomes a morning workout and makes me more productive during the day. But start within yourself and embrace the change that's in front of you. And then analyze and look at the growing opportunities in front of you. And we don't know everything. I do not know everything there is to know about PTA, but we do all know something. All of us here today know something. And if a problem was put in front of us, I know that together we could all work together to figure it out. You want to plan. Where are you going? What are you doing? And how are we going to get there? Implement that plan. Jump in and make it happen. But then review. See what works. See what didn't. Then adopt or adapt. If it worked, great. Move on. Here we go. If, you, if it didn't work so well, maybe there's a little something that needed tweaked. Let's adapt to change and make it happen so it's better. You adjust. We have new people, new responsibilities. The plan works. And this one is my favorite. This one is my absolutely favorite. This is actually a friend of mine who does yoga. Um, she obviously does it very well because I don't remember the last time I could do that. I think I was maybe 10. Um, so she's a yoga person. She's incredibly flexible. And this picture I think just embodies this portion perfectly. When you know change is going to happen and it's out of your control, sometimes it's PTA units, change happens from our school district and comes down to us and we have to implement it and there's nothing we can do about it, right? So the best thing to do is just accept the change and be flexible, be like the rubber band. I wish I had a rubber band, I don't have one. Bad planning on my part. Be a rubber band, be flexible rather than being a brick and you've got change happening all around you and you just sit there, be flexible. Adapt and change. Think about it this way. What happens if you change your route to work, all right? Every morning I go to work, I turn right out of my driveway, drive around the corner, head to work. But what would it happen if I turned left and went around the other corner and went the opposite direction to work? It might take me longer, that's true, but I might see something that I've never noticed before. This past year, these past almost two years with COVID, when I served as president of my unit, I guarantee I did not sign on to be president during a pandemic. And I don't think any of us did. However, being 
given that responsibility and being able to lead a PTA unit during this time gave me a new perspective on leadership and gave me a new perspective on what PTA can do. It gave me a new perspective on what we were doing as a PTA. It was about becoming flexible and learning how to make those changes. So it's time to take a chance and make that change. Energize yourself for change and get ready. Create a vision, positive outcomes and prepare for the negative. List opportunities, opportunities to do more and expand your horizons. Your choice is to do good or bad opportunities. You might as well do good. Create the networks that can help you and build bridges. These people who can help may still be resistant, but change is better when you're all there working together. We can succeed and thrive through organization, organizational change. We can't change the wind, but you can adjust your sales. So set short-term goals instead of great big goals. Work in small bursts of activity. Focus on the team effort. Let your team help you carry it along. Don't work alone. And plan for possible change in scenarios. What are the what ifs you can plan for? Anticipating the ups and downs of change will always help. Attitude, oops, sorry. Attitude is the little thing that can make a big difference. There are some things that will get the best of us. Discouragement will happen to all of us. Are you going to splatter where you hit rock bottom, fall apart and you stay there? Or are you going to be a bouncer where you hit rock bottom and you pull it together and you bounce right back in it? Everybody can come across problems, but there's a difference between being a problem spotter and a problem solver. Use your problems as a potential opportunity. Fear will only bring more fear and it will cause you to just stop and it will cause you to become distracted. The fear of failure is self-sabotaging. Don't give into it and don't, be, don't start to refuse to take that risk. Look at failure as a part of your success and change your attitude. Change your vocabulary from I can to I can't, just like this picture shows, and let your failures redirect you. It's a learning experience. Remember, if you're willing to change your thinking, you can change your feelings. If you change your feelings, you can change your actions. And changing your actions based on good thinking can change your life. Your attitude can be contagious. Make sure that the attitude you spread is a positive one and a healthy one. You can do anything that you put your mind to. And we tell our kids this all the time. So are we leading them by example? There may be problems and there may be inconveniences, but it's how you choose to react that will put it all in perspective and make change happen better. So just in closing, I wanted to show a picture. These are my PTAY people. Um, my daughter, my two sons, my husband, they're the ones who support this, what I do, and they're the reason I got into PTA to begin with. If you have questions, um, my email address is right there. Field support Ditkowski, D I T K O W S K I, at nyspta.org. And I, like I said, create a culture of inquiry. So I am creating that culture here. Feel free to send me questions anytime. I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much.